properties of uh, proportion so these are the five properties of proportion all invertendo alternando componendo dividendo componendo and dividendo okay so i'll discuss in detail so the first one is invertendo so what is invertendo if a b c d are proportional then b comma a comma d comma c are also proportional in other word we can say that if a ratio b is proportional to c ratio d then b ratio a is proportional to d ratio c so here what we did so here what happened the numerator become the denominator and the denominator become the numerator so this property is called the invertendo property fine so our next uh, property is alternando so what is alternando if a b c d are proportional then a comma c comma b comma d are also proportional in other word you can say that a ratio b proportional to c ratio d then a ratio c is proportional to b ratio d so here what it did here it get exchange okay so instead of instead of c it become b and instead of b it become c we just exchange this term fine so this property is called the alternate property fine our third property is Componendo. So if a b c d are proportional, then a plus b comma b comma c plus d comma d are also proportional. In other word, we can say that if a ratio b is proportional c ratio d, then a plus b ratio b is proportional to c plus d ratio d. So what happened here? We just add the denominator to the numerator. Similarly. In the next case also we add d to c so it becomes c plus d okay so this is the ratio so this property is called componendo property okay our fourth uh, property is dividendo so what is dividendo if a b c d are proportional then a comma a minus b comma c comma c minus d are also proportional okay in other word you can say that a ratio b is proportional to c ratio d then a ratio a minus b proportional to c ratio c minus d so what happened here it just the denominator is subtracted from the numerator so it become a minus b and in the next case d is subtracted from the numerator that is c so c it becomes c minus d so this property is called dividendo okay our fifth property and the last property is componendo and dividendo so what is componendo and dividendo let's see if a b c d are proportional then a plus b comma a minus b comma c plus d comma c minus d are also proportional in other word you can say that if a ratio b proportional to c ratio d then a plus b ratio a minus b is proportional to c plus d ratio c minus d so what happened here the denominator is added to the numerator and the denominator is subtracted from the numerator so it become a plus b and a minus b similarly in this case if you add uh, the denominator here it will become c plus d and if you subtract d from c it becomes c minus d so this is the fifth property okay componendo and dividendo so let's see some of the definition important definition so the first one is proportion so what is proportion proportion mean equal ratio measure of four quantities or four numbers suppose a b c d are said to be in proportional if the ratio of the first two that is a ratio b and the ratio of the last two that is c ratio d are equal then we can say that a b c d are in proportion okay terms of proportion so what is terms of proportion here a b c d are the terms okay so these are called terms of proportion here it is given if a b c d are proportion each is called a term of proportion here one example is given 5 ratio 7 proportional to 10 ratio 14 so here 5 7 10 and 14 are terms of proportion our next term is extreme term of a proportion and middle term so what is extreme term here if a b c d are in proportion then a and d are the extreme term and b and c are the middle term okay so here one example is given 5 ratio 7 proportional to 10 ratio 14 then here 5 and 14 are the extreme term and 7 and 10 are the middle term our next definition is fourth proportional of a proportion so what is fourth proportional 
here d is the fourth proportion okay so if a b c d are in proportion such that a ratio b proportional to c ratio d then d is called the fourth proportion so in this example uh, 14 is the fourth proportion fine our next term is Continued proportion. So, what is continued proportion? If there are three terms, then we call it continued proportion. Here, B will be repeat again. Here, you can see uh, proportion are also formed with three terms. If A, B, C are three terms such that A ratio B proportional to B ratio C, then A, B, C are proportional. Such a proportion is called continued proportion. Here, what happened? if there are three terms then we repeat the middle term two times okay so here is one example is given 5 uh, ratio 10 proportional to 10 ratio 20 here 5 10 and 20 are continued proportion Our last term is mean proportion and the third proportion of a continued proportion so mean proportion mean what the term which is in the middle is called the mean proportion here since there are three terms so it will be continued proportion and if we repeat this uh, middle term two times then this middle term is called the mean proportion here you can see b is called the mean proportion between a and c if a b c are in proportion such that a ratio b proportional to b ratio c then b is called the mean proportion so this b the middle term we repeat again so this b is called the mean proportion okay and here since there are three terms so this will be the third term and it will be continued proportion because there are three terms so it will be continued proportion so here is one example four uh, proportion uh, four ratio eight proportion to eight ratio 16 so here eight will be the mean proportion and 16 will be the third proportion of continued proportion okay so these are some important uh, terms and uh, properties so next uh, let's see some of the question from 3b from the chapter ratio and proportion of advanced maths of class 8 okay so we'll start exercise uh, 3b question number 2 the question number 2 is given in the following proportion find the unknown number n so the first question is given n ratio 5 is proportion to 7 ratio 15 so how can you write we can write this one as this 7 ratio 15 okay so what we'll do we'll just cross multiply so if you cross multiply this will be n into 15 and if you multiply with this 5 into 7 okay so you keep n if you take 15 to the other side it will be divide so if you divide by 15 how many times we can cancel it it will become 3 so n become 7 by 3 so this is Roman number 1 okay we'll do the next question our next Roman number 3 is given 1 by 2 is proportion to n by 12 so what we'll do in this case so we'll just cross multiply if you cross multiply 2 into n and this will become 1 into 12 so you just keep n and take this one to the other side it will become 12 and if you take 2 to the other side it will be divide so if you cancel it it will become 6 so n equals to 6 so our next question is Roman number 5 so Roman number 5 is given 3 ratio 13 is proportion to 6 ratio n so this one we can write as 3 by 13 and 6 by n similarly like the previous one you just cross multiply if you cross multiply 3 into n and if you multiply this one it will be 13 into 6 okay you don't have to multiply this one you just keep it as it is so we uh, keep n if you take this one to the other side it will be divide so if you divide by 3 it will be 2 so n will become 26 okay this is uh, from question number 2 so next we will start question number 3 apply the concept of proportion to so Roman number 1 is given find the price of 16 pen at the rate of 15, rupees 15 for every 4 pen okay so you have to find the price of 16 pen and here it is given uh, rate of 4 pen is 15 rupees so you have to find the cost of 16 pen so what will do question number 3 Roman number 1 it is given let the cost of 16 pen be x we'll take x okay so what we'll do now according to question according to question how we'll write 
to let 16 pen cost x rupees and it is proportional to 4 pen cost 15 rupees isn't it so we convert this one into proportion so what will do 16 by x and this one 4 by 15 now cross multiply this will be 4 into x and this will become 16 into 15 take this 4 to the other side it will become 16 into 15 by 4 so if you cancel it it will become 4 so x will become how much 15 4 are 60 so the cost of 16 pen will become 60 rupees okay we will see the next question so our next question is given find the price of 30 handkerchief if the price of one dozen is rupees 8 one dozen mean 12 okay so let the cost of 30 anchor should be x okay now let now according to question what can you write 30 anchor chip cost x rupees is proportional to next is 1 dozen cost rupees 8 so 1 dozen mean 12 12 anchor chip cost 8 rupees so this we can write as 30 ratio x proportional to 12 ratio 8 now cross multiply 12 into x and 30 into 8 take this 12 to the other side x equals to 30 into x divided by 12 so if you cancel by 4 4 3s are 4 2s are 3 10 are so x equals to 10 2s are 20 rupees so the cost of 30 handkerchief will be rupees 20 okay so these are a few questions from exercise 3b okay so i'll continue the other question in my next video okay thank you for watching